What's going on guys? Stefan, SNE's Garage. Today we're here from you in SNE's Garage. We're actually at headquarters, if you will. Um, I kind of wanted to switch gears a little bit today. We've been covering the TRV uh, last couple videos. I've been, you know, doing some little tweaks to it and stuff, sharing them with you. Um, but like I said, I kind of wanted to switch gears. We're going to go back over to Hyundai and uh, my one video of replacing the knock sensor on that, I believe it was a 2015 Sonata uh, with the P1326 code has gotten a ton of views and a lot of you have actually subscribed to my channel because of that video. So for that, thank you. That is so, you know, much appreciated. Um, so I kind of wanted to do a little bit of a timeline um, on the Hyundai Theta engine and when it started to become a problem engine. Uh, which would be in 2011 when they they upgraded it to the Theta 2 uh, by turning it into a direct injected engine. Whereas in 2010 and prior, when it was first introduced as a world engine, um, world engine meaning a couple of manufacturers used it. It was uh, Dodge used it, Hyundai used it, I believe Mitsubishi used it. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the engine in the Evo. Uh, the 4B11T, I believe it is, is a variant of the, the world engine, which that's for another video. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to get into when that engine started to become a problem, how it started to become a problem, and uh, how Hyundai and Kia as, a, as a, an entity uh, didn't really react as fast as they should have, and that actually cost them a lot of money. Uh, so with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so like I said earlier, the Theta 2 was introduced in 2011 um, in the YF Sonata. That was the first year of the YF, was 2011. And then they introduced it in the Santa Fe in 2013. Now, when they updated the Theta to the Theta 2, there were a few minor changes, uh, but the major, the most major change would be that they converted it from a multi-port fuel-injected car to a direct injected car. Um, and where I think they missed up in that whole process is they completely eliminated the multi-port fuel injection. It's strictly direct injected, so there is nothing to clean the back of those intake valves or the intake track, and they are actually very, very prone to carbon buildup, um, which may or may not contribute to the failure of them. Um, really not sure. The Hyundai has never mentioned anything about direct injected being the main reason that they fail. Um, but that is when we started to see, uh, you know, some early failures in those engines. So around 2013, 2012-ish, um, in the dealership, we kind of started to notice pattern failures um, in these engines. Whereas rod bearings would just start failing. The engines would start knocking. Some of them would come in knocking. Some of them would come in seized. And some of them would actually throw the, the, the connecting rod through either the side of the block or down the bottom of the block, depending on uh, which piston failed. If one, two, one through three failed, you have the oil pump and the balance shaft in the way the rod can't make it all the way down. But if it was number four, it could shoot the rod straight down the bottom through the upper oil pan and oil would get everywhere. Can't make this shit up. Um, so that was kind of when we started to see um, pattern failures in these engines. Now this is before Hyundai had, had, had recalled them or before I guess it was on their radar if you will. Uh, but they were failing for no rhyme or reason. These were, in most of the time, were in cars that were fairly well maintained and had fairly low mileage. Um, so that is when we in the dealership, maybe 2014 is when it really started to, you know, kick in. But in those three years is when we started to see, hey, you know, maybe we have a little bit of, a, of an issue here with this engine. Now what I wanted to show you guys real quick is my collection here of Hyundai rods that actually blew through the bottom of these engine blocks and part of the procedure in replacing these was to free up the engine so that you can spin it and get the torque converter bolts out so we had to many times you know take the engines apart slightly 
to get these pieces out so that the engine would rotate. And if you'll notice on all of these rod caps, they actually turn black. They get so hot from the rod bearings failing that they, they, they cook the oil that's on them and they carbonize it and it turns them black. So these are all pieces of rods or, or rod caps from Hyundai Theta engines, whether they be 2.0 uh, T or 2.4. And this is a piece of a piston. You can actually see the rings, or where the rings would go. So on or about uh, 2015 is when things really started to, uh, to kind of show that, hey, we, we definitely have an issue here. Um, and in December of 2015, Hyundai launched what was called the 132 campaign and or recall. Um, and that was for 2011 and 2012 Hyundai Sonatas. And basically what Hyundai came out publicly and said is, yes, we have a problem with these engines. And they mentioned it being related to the crankshaft and the fact that the oil journals in the crankshaft were actually not deburred correctly at the factory, causing oil restrictions to these, uh, these connecting rod bearings and causing premature failures. I've never had a crankshaft out of one of these. I've never gotten inside of a crankshaft, so I couldn't tell you if that's true or not. Um, but what Hyundai had us do for the 132 is we had our, our GDS, the Global Diagnostic System, that was a Hyundai scan tool. It was actually a, a Galaxy tablet, and it obviously it had a microphone and it had uh, a camera on it. Um, so what Hyundai would actually have us do is sit in the car, windows up, with the tablet in our hands in front of the steering wheel, and we would hold the engine at various different RPMs, uh, 2,000, uh, between two and 3,000, wherever you can get it to sit, and then at idle. And what this tablet would do is it would record the engine, and it would be listening for a very specific frequency, which is the frequency of rod bearing failure when the engine starts, you know, banging together inside when the metal parts start contacting each other. And, um, and you would either get a pass or a fail. Now, the problem with that was it was testing the engine at that very moment. It wasn't testing it for an impending failure or a failure that was going to happen tomorrow or the day after or a year later. It was checking the engine at that very second, which may or may not be very accurate. Um, so what happened there is if the engine passed, which most of them did at that point, uh, we would change the dipstick from a yellow dipstick to a red dipstick. Now the yellow dipstick was marked for 4.8 quarts of oil. The red dipstick increased the oil capacity of these engines to 5.2 quarts. Why they did that, couldn't really tell you. That was just the way they did it. And if it passed, we also changed the oil and filter for free at the same time. All right, so we talked a little bit about the 132 recall. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit to the 162. Uh, the 162 came out in, I want to say, September of 2017, and it then included 2013 and 2014 Hyundai Sonatas, where prior it was only 11 and 12, and now they brought the 13 and 14 Santa Fe into the mix, because as I mentioned before, in 13, the Santa Fe also got the Theta 2 engine. Uh, now, the 162 recall was very similar to the 132. It's just with the 162, they introduced a new special service tool, which was basically a microphone in a tube with a wire on it that would plug into the engine oil dipstick of the car, and then we would run the wire down the driver's side and into the cabin. And we would then use that same scan tool, the GDS I was telling you about, and record the engine at various different speeds. And like I mentioned with the 132, we're testing the engine at that exact moment. It could be okay at that moment when we tested it. The customer could take it. Some of them we would get back a week later, blown up. And it was just no rhyme or reason, like I said. Um, now, what actually also started to happen with these is some of them, when they would fail, they would shoot the rod out the side of the block where the exhaust manifold is, and some of these things were catching fire. Um, so the government really started to kind of kick into high gear here and, you know, getting down Hyundai's neck trying to figure out what was going on. 
Now this was the same as the 132. If they passed the recall, they got a red dipstick with a higher oil capacity and an oil change. If they failed, they got a new engine, uh, which was the same with the 132. Um, so we were doing these on cars that would come in for oil changes. If it had the recall open, we would do it. And we would also do this on engines that had failed. We had to actually record the engine knocking with the failure, with it knocking, to send the Hyundai to get the engine approved. And we actually had two or three of these things in the shop shoot the rod out the side of the block and catch fire in the shop. Um, which was kind of why Hyundai ended the 162 after a little while because they were having too many what they like to call thermal events. And uh, it got to a point where if they were knocking real bad for a while, we were doing these tests outside to prevent any issues in the shop. Alright guys, so now we're in August of 2018 and Hyundai launched the 953 campaign. And what the 953 campaign was, it was basically a software update to install what's called the knock sensor detection system into these cars. Now, what is the knock sensor detection system? It basically, it leverages the knock sensor in the engine to start listening for premature rod bearing failure. Now, the way a knock sensor works is when the engine starts to ping or spark knock, it creates a voltage and the PCM looks at that voltage and it'll either retard ignition timing or it'll advance ignition timing if it doesn't see any voltage. Um, so what this software did is it looked for a very specific voltage of the engine starting to, to knock, the rod bearing starting to fail, and when it saw that, it would put the engine into what's called engine protection mode, or which many of you may know as limp home mode. Now, Hyundai came out with this software because the federal government really started getting down their necks and they were basically giving an ultimatum. They needed to find a way to warn Hyundai owners when their engines were going to fail or the government was going to make them bring every single car in and either inspect or replace the engine, you know, get in there and check it. And uh, that's a lot of labor that Hyundai would have to pay out to their dealers and I'm sure they didn't want to do that. So their answer to that was the knock sensor detection software. Now that went into 11 to 14 YF Sonatas. It went into 2015 to 2019 LF Sonatas. It went in 2014-2015 Santa Fe, 18 to 19 Tucson. And uh, when I left, that was kind of where we were at. It was going into basically anything with the Theta 2 engine. So the whole lineup that had the Theta 2 engine, the direct injected only engine, got this software. Now what this software does, like I mentioned before, is it places the car into an engine protection mode and it keeps you as the driver from driving the car at high speeds while the engine is in the middle of failing. And this was to prevent those engine fires that I was telling you about. Because if you're going down the highway, you know, 75, 85 miles an hour and this engine lets go and catches fire, it's going to take you a little bit if you're in the left lane to get over to the right lane and pull over it. If that engine's on fire, that's, that's dangerous. Um, so this is why the 953 was, was basically introduced and uh, what that P1326 code is. The P1326 is the PCMC's, hey, we got an internal issue here. Shut her down so they can get home and then tow it to the dealer or limp it straight to the dealer. Now, when the 953 was initially introduced, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm going to be frank, it was a complete shit show. Um, this was the first variant of the software, and we actually had a lot of issues with it. Um, it was putting cars that shouldn't have been in engine protection mode into engine protection mode, and uh, we had to do several things. First off, uh, we almost ran out of loaners, or we did run out of loaners, actually. Um, when this initially started happening because these cars were going down into engine protection mode when the engine was not, you know, failed, when it hasn't failed. And Hyundai had no answers for us on how to, you know, rectify the issue. So they had us order engines for these cars and put people in loaners at first. Um, the engines were on a national back order, so some of these things would sit for four, five, six months at a clip. And then we got a memo from Hyundai 
If you had an engine on order for these cars, cancel the order. This is what you need to do before you replace the engine. We're going to get into that right now. So like I mentioned before, the 953 came out in August of 2018. Um, in October of 2018 is when Hyundai released the T3G campaign, which was basically the campaign to instruct technicians how to determine if the P1326 was set by an engine failure or if it was set by what they called a wire harness interference issue. Now, like I mentioned before, the NOx sensor detection system was looking for a very specific voltage out of the NOx sensor to put these cars into the limp home mode or the engine protection mode and set that P1326. Now what had actually happened is on some of these cars out of the factory, the NOx sensor was resting on I believe it was either the number two or the number three fuel injector wire. And even though the NOx sensor harness is shielded, um, those, I believe, are 48-volt fuel injectors because they're, they're high pressure. They're, they're direct injected injectors, so they need a lot of voltage to open and close the pintle. And what was actually happening is when that magnetic field would clap to, to fire the injector, the NOx sensor was picking that up, and it was actually setting these cars into engine protection mode, which is what I mentioned before when Hyundai didn't know how to fix the issue at first for two months. Um, that was what they came up with. So we had to run what was called the wire harness inspection test. After we would run, we, first we would run the sound test, make sure the engine wasn't knocking, and then we would do the wire harness inspection test, which basically was again using that scan tool to, to monitor the voltages coming out of that knock sensor. And if it saw something that looked like it was a fuel injector firing, it would fail that test. And then we had to run an overlay harness specifically for the knock sensor. So we would cut the wires for the knock sensor off of the main engine harness, and we would go into the PCM, depin the knock sensor harness, repin it with a new standalone harness, and we would run that on top of the engine control harness away from any other wires. So after we ran all of these wire harness inspections and replaced all these wire harnesses, um, Hyundai finally said, you know what, we're not going to do this anymore. Uh, it's too labor intensive, it's costing us too much money, whatever their reason was. Um, so from that point, what we basically did is if the car came in with that P1326, we would have to run what was called the, uh, the bearing clearance test, which you saw me run in that video of replacing the knock sensor. And we would basically use this box, we called it the Ghostbusters box, in, in my dealership, which is what we called it. Um, and what it would do, it would, you'd pull all four of your spark plugs out, you'd set the number one cylinder on top dead center, and you would use this tool to basically put vacuum, in, it would put vacuum and pressure into the combustion chamber, and it would measure how much that piston and rod assembly moved. And by measuring how much that moved, it was in essence measuring rod bearing clearance. Um, so many of these cars, this, this test was a lot more accurate than the sound test, we actually, we, we kind of liked it because we knew, all right, this engine's good, um, at least right this second. Um, so if it passed that test, it would get a new software update. Now this 953 or this T3G, whichever one you want to consider it, went through many revisions, at least four or five while I was there. Um, I left in April, so there may have been more changes since then. I've been out of the dealership, I'm really not sure. Um, but they basically would keep updating, you know, putting software updates in these cars. Um, and if it, through that P1326, had the latest software in it, and the rod bearings were good, we would put a knock sensor in it, which again, was what you saw, saw me do in that dealer, um, or in that video. Now, one question that a lot of you guys have been asking me in that video in the comment section is, is this repair covered under warranty? Um, the answer to that is yes and no. Uh, when it comes into the shop, you're probably going to have to pay a one or two hour diagnostic charge, um, depending on the dealership. Um, and then at that point, if your repair does end up being covered under warranty, that that charge would be waived. Now, Hyundai has warrantied the, the vehicles in the T3G and the 953 campaign. Their engines are covered for life but only for rod bearing failure. If you wipe a cam lobe out or 
or something, if it's burning oil, things like that, they're not going to repair that, they're not going to warranty that. They only cover them under warranty if it's rod bearing failure. Uh, take that with a grain of salt, if your car's burning oil, um, maybe you forget to check it, and the rod bearings fail, um, that's up to you, and that is warranty fraud, so tread lightly with that. Um, but they are only covering these engines for rod bearing failure. Now, Hyundai and Kia was actually fined $137 million because they delayed recalling these vehicles when this problem first started. Um, so hopefully they've learned from their mistakes. Hopefully the new SmartStream 2.5 liter engine is a better engine. Uh, they, we just started getting those cars in when I was uh, you know, on my way out of the dealership. Um, so I'm not sure how they're doing now. I know these YF Sonatas and the, you know, the Santa Fe's with the, the Theta 2 engine are still having issues. Um, so if you're looking at one of these used, um, tread lightly. Even though you will have coverage for life for rod bearing failure, do you really want to be out on a road trip with your family and, you know, have the engine fail on you? And we actually had that a couple times because we, I live in, in <clears throat> basically like a resort town, if you will, in the area of one. I live right by Long Beach Island. So we had a lot of cars in my dealership from North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, and these engines would fail while these people were on vacations, and you can't take our loaners out of state. So these people were, were kind of in a bad spot. Um, so with that said, I hope this video answers some of your questions with the Hyundai Theta. Um, like I mentioned before, the main reason for failure as far as Hyundai and Kia are concerned is there were there was debris or, or burrs in the crankshaft um, oil journals which restricted oil flow to these rod bearings. Um, so with that being said, please like, share, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.